my god, we did it so fast this time. I know, look at us go. We're on it. I'm really proud. Um, so we're back. Just... Ooh. I had to stop off in the kitchen to make myself a chai latte. I love that for you. Oh, Jesus. We were off to <laughs> such a good start, but I forgot to actually hit record on my camera. But there we go. Now we're good. <laughs> What's up, everyone? The four, the, the Fantastic Hi, Four. Besties. Back again. That's exciting, I think. At least it is for me. This is one of the highlights of my week. Every time Same. anybody says back again, I start singing the Backstreet Boys song. Guess who's back? Well, it's, every time immediately it's, oh my god, they're back again. <laughs> oh, see, my mind immediately goes to, guess who's back? That's what it is for me, too. Some generational differences. Here's another generational difference I've noticed that's just been on my mind recently. Brooks, when I send you a TikTok, if you personally do not enjoy the content of that TikTok or, like, agree with it, you don't like the message. And for me, when I like someone's message, that is an indication that I have seen it. But I noticed this recently because I sent you that TikTok of that actress from what we do in the shadows in something else and i captioned yeah. it with that sound everyone knows that tiktok sounds like mommy sorry mommy sorry i like typed that out and you didn't like either of those hey you haven't liked like the majority of videos that i've sent yeah because you started it uh -uh. Yes, you did. I like oh, people's she, messages, an indication that I've seen it. it. And then I started sending you things, and you, like, wouldn't like the message if you did not, like, if the, like, content of the TikTok was not your exact sense of humor. I was trying to follow your lead. Okay. Girls are... Sure. <laughs> yes. I get my norms from you youngsters. I don't know what people are supposed <laughs> to do with those things, so I just kind of did whatever I thought you were doing. Yeah, I think it's funny when I send you something. I'm like, oh man, she must not like that one. Like, she must not thought that one was funny. I mean, sometimes that might be the case. Yeah. We have uh, our senses of humor overlap in such interesting ways, and our polar opposites in others, which I think will be fun to explore when we're doing our um, Venn diagram that is going to be most of this episode. But do we want to do that first, or do we want to do the two actual quote unquote questions? that we have for today and then do the Venn diagram in the questions. latter half. I only see one. Oh, uh, that's because Emily texted me the other one and I um, had to dash back after um, letting out the dogs that I am watching this week. Because I still cannot find anything to save my life. I'm a boomer. I cannot find this document. I will I will share it. I will get, like give you an actual link at some point. <laughs> Sorry. But, um... So funny. So, Emily, would you like to start with the question that you sent me? Yeah, so... TikTok? There has been a lot of discourse on TikTok recently. And the question is... In the entire world, are there more doors or wheels? I've been thinking about this since you sent it to me. And... I can't arrive at a clear answer because at first I was like, I think there are going to have to be more doors because think like something like a car, a lot of cars have four doors. So like you're already starting out on like almost even ground. If you're just counting cars, like approximately the same number of like wheels to doors. But then I thought about things like hotels and cruise ships, which like have a lot of, have like a lot of doors, but no wheels. And then I also thought about things like trains, which, like, have wheels and doors, but could tip the scale in favor of wheels. And I really, like, I have been agonizing, and I've come so, like, I've had so many instances where I was like, oh, cruise ships, obviously, there's more doors. But I haven't actually been able to arrive at a final conclusion. Um, so the thing that's been killing me is depend, like, what counts, mm -hmm. and, like, what about Hot Wheels and Lego cars and stuff that all I mean, have those wheels? Those are wheels. Like, I'm going to say they count. Those are wheels. Skateboards. How many Hot Wheels exist in the world? And each of those Hot Wheels cars and Matchbox cars and whatever, each of those has four little wheels. 
and no door. So, wait, so but again, does, but again, does the door or the wheel, does the door or the wheel have to be functional or can it just be the representation of one? Because they have, they technically have doors, but they don't work. The wheels work. Like I think the discourse is then they have to be functional. So like, okay. I mean, there are some little model cars. Microwave that you door. Have. That's a door. Microwaves have doors. Jesus. I was going to say, what about like an oven? Technically it opens yeah. like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. right. And also there are like things like dollhouses that have like little functional doors and like not like hot wheels and, and not like, like hot Barbie wheels cars. cars but like some little like slightly more detailed like model cars do have functional doors and wheels just right now i can see like 12 doors from where i'm sitting like the door to my apartment the cabinet doors yeah i'm looking down the street we oven got pantry doors to people's houses like we got car doors i mean there's a lego model of a fiat up on top of um that blanket chest there and it has functional doors and also wheels i have been stressed out about this question for about three days <laughs> that's just the thing i was like none of us are going to sleep tonight no yeah. I'm, I'm most certainly not going to sleep tonight i am going to be thinking about this for quite um, a while also somebody brought up when i watched this tiktok and this girl was like well, if we're letting them count cupboard doors as doors, I want to present cheese wheels. Does a cheese wheel count as a wheel? No, it's a wheel. It does not. It has to be on an axle. No, it's not no. functional. Yeah. It has to be on an axle. Yeah, I'm going to say thank you. It has to be on an axle. But then, like, what constitutes, like, does a cupboard door count? Is that yeah. a door? Yeah. It's on hinges and it swings open. Yeah, I think that's going to be our, def like, what defines a door on hinges and swings open. What about automatic doors? Those don't swing open, those are on hinges, but those are definitely doors. But they're on hinges, they just don't swing. They're not really on hinges, they're on slidey things. Tracks. Well, yeah, like Sliding I doors have them. wheels. Microwave? There's three wheels on the little plate spinny thing in the microwave. Oh my god. I probably hate my closet, because oh. it has the slidey doors. Oh, and yeah. it's upsetting me. Its presence is upsetting me. Sorry. <laughs> I warned you all about my state of mind. <laughs> I know. Like, every single day you tell me that you didn't sleep enough, and then every single day you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed early, and then it never ha- Like, I'm- like, I'm a little worried, I'm gonna say. I did- Eight hours of sleep last night for the first time in, like, three years. Wow. Nice. So okay, weird. nice, but- <laughs> Turns out it was just me. Repeat? <laughs> I got eight hours of sleep last night, and I'm still weird, so it turns out it was just me. It wasn't the lack of sleep. I'm just weird. Okay, Regardless cool. of I mean, like, yeah. That, that doesn't surprise me in the amount of time that I've known you. I can't say I'm surprised. My dresser has a wheel on it for this little drawer. Oh, it's got two wheels that roll to open the drawer. Oh, oh most drawers God, yeah. Wheels in that dresser right there. I think I'm gonna have to say more wheels because we keep coming up with small things that have wheels and out and don't have doors. For example, desk my, drawers, or like my kitchen has so many cupboards. That's so many doors. I forgot <laughs> that my, my shelves have doors too. I didn't even think about that. Like, I just keep thinking of new doors things. Here, I'm like, oh, the well, balcony. That Those are million. actual doors. I hang this on. It just keeps getting worse. I love it. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Literally, just from what I can see, eighteen doors. If I'm including like cabinets and whatnot, and and and, and I'm including both cabinets as one door, like, like not like this is one, this is two, like they're both, they're both one. And that's eighteen. Really, I would count that as two because you can open one door if you just need one side. Like if you just need something on one then side. Then it's way and more than eighteen. Doors. Then it's like oh, probably a good thirty at least. No, it's gonna be more than thirty because I'm counting. Yeah, it, it's probably gonna be about double. Around my room because there's <clears throat> two doors on that. There's my closet door, my bedroom door. The doors on my like mo like on my little Lego cars, of which I have more one than door. one. Bedroom door, closet door. <laughs> oh, oh, more doors! I, I keep missing. Oh, man. I probably have at least, like, 40 doors that I can There's see. There's so many here. doors. <laughs> but 
there are so many wheels. I know. <laughs> That's the thing. As soon as I think I arrive at a conclusion, like, there are wheels in my record player. I like I was just thinking about cassettes. Yeah, cassettes. VHS tapes. Yeah. Maybe there are more wheels. <clears throat> I keep wanting to say doors, but then I think about wheels. And also, like, technically, like, wheels within, like, engines and whatever. Well, the thing that makes me lean doors is because I'm thinking of less developed countries as well. That mm -hmm. might not have any cars or buses or, you know, like, our various doodads that we throw wheels in for seemingly no reason. This is true, but, but then I also think about things like the amount of, like, mopeds that there are in, like, Vietnam or whatever. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of them. Right. Bikes? Yeah, bikes, bikes each have two wheels and zero doors. Bikes. Four mopeds. wheels if you have training wheels on them. Tricycles, motorcycles. ATVs. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's for, there's so many wheels. I think I'm team wheels, personally. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to say I wheels. I'm still doors. Because, like, if, like, my car outside has four wheels, but it has four doors, so that cancels itself out, and then I can count. Not necessarily. There's, like, probably wheels in internal mechanisms of your car. Probably, but by that logic, there's also doors in that, like, maybe, the, like, the oil cap or something. Like, like, Oil cap is not a door. Yeah, no. But 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 depending on how, how far you want to break it down, like like if if we're defining wheel as spear on axle, that's what I, I'm saying. Wheel is uh, circle on axle. Or at least that's what I'm defining it as. I I'm or, team yeah, wheel. Circle this. Now I've started wondering which was invented first. Because, like, I feel like a wheel's a pretty basic thing, Doors. but, but yeah, right, you think say, before we got to the wheel, wheel someone put but, a piece of bark over the cave that they were hiding in. Which feels right, but at the same time, it's like they had to have noticed things rolled before then, and were there, like, rudimentary wheels before they actually started to, like, build things with wheels, intentionally. The wheel was invented in the 4th millennium B.C., oh. I think the door was invented in 3000 BC. What, where are you getting this from? <clears throat> I get, I don't, because that, that was in wooden doors in Europe, but then this one says that there are Egyptian tomb paintings with doors. And they were first accepted somewhere in central Egypt 4,000 yeah, I mean, years ago. I'm not ago. even thinking about that. I'm thinking about, like, Australopithecus putting a big leaf over the entrance to the cave that they were in. But if we're defining it as something on hinges... Oh, you're right. Yeah. So then I guess we're going to have to say Egypt, or like Mesopotamia. Was the stone in front of Jesus' tomb a door? <laughs> no, it was, it was a wheel! No, because it wasn't attached to anything. So it was a wheel. It wasn't on an axle! <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, no, that's just a freaking rock. That's not... <laughs> Yeah, okay. That's a big rock. I'm stressed out, man. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I'm like, my idea of which came first. I was like, oh, that'll help. Maybe if one came way for the other. I'm like, no, 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 I can't even answer that question. Because the more I think about it, the more it... I'm, I'm just, uh, I wheels. need the census, I'm gonna say wheels. but for doors and wheels. Correct. Okay, yes. Yeah. Someone needs to get on this. Because you could feasibly find out. Mm-hmm. You have a point. You technically could. I mean, there are some places that are, like, no longer populated. You have to send people to those places to find, like, the doors. And... That's fine. I will go count the doors in Chernobyl. We're definitely going to miss some, like, random shacks and then jungle. That's fine. I mean, we could each do our own homes. <laughs> Report back. That could be a fun little experiment for us. Okay. Oh, My okay, final Zach. answer is wheels by Zach. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure he'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Rhymes. Um, yeah, I'm going to say I'm on team wheel. There he is. Brooke's final answer. Are you team doors or team wheels? Uh, I mean, I, I'm still leaning doors, but I can't. 
I mean, we're not getting any like final answers here. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. That's we fair. just we just need you to say words. Yeah, I'm legitimately thinking about like, you know, I got three classes tomorrow. Just starting each of them off with a, a survey. Yes, do it. <laughs> Will you please? I am begging you. Because you can do like a poll everywhere, you know, and they can just yeah. whip out their phones and, and yes, type it yes, in. Yes, and yes. In. We will come back with some Not scientific like, results, y'all. There's a hundred students between all three. I mean, it, it is the last day of our classes before spring break, so it's probably not a great attendance day tomorrow, but... But also, like, whatever. But, like, what a fun way to be like, you know, break's almost coming, let's start with this, because I need to know. Oh, I do stuff like that all the time. Um... <laughs> Care to share with any examples with the class? Well, just for some reason, and I'm teaching a class on mass media and youth this semester. I like teach it every couple years. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, this semester I keep making random references to things from my childhood nice. that they don't know what I'm talking about. So I've started nearly every class with some random like video of uh, like a toy I had as a kid, like a super '90s commercial. I love that for uh, you. That reminds me of when we were in class and you started off by showing that vine that's like, "Look at this graph." One of my favorites of all time, the Nickelback. Oh, Look at this Yeah. I miss Vine. Um, Zach, do we get a final answer from you? Sorry, my thing is all frozen for me. Oh, that's not good. Yikes. Yeah, doors are wheels. Oh, no. Oh, fun. He's just straight up frozen now. He's faking podcast ghost yeah i vibe with that well he said doors before okay yeah. so we're split down the middle then that's kind of fun i mean i'm not gonna lie there's a little part of me that said door so zach wouldn't feel alone <laughs> oh you that's so nice wheels. It's okay. he, he can't hear me right yeah he can't hear i you mean guys. i genuinely agree <laughs> He's just sitting there, like, making a face that we just can't see. Right. How rude! I know. <laughs> Weird. Um, um, I have another question that has been keeping me up at night legitimately. Let's go. If we want that for right now. Sure. So, you know how, like, you lose change a lot, or sometimes you even lose money? Like, you know, you, you know. get change from the drive through you, like, throw it, it gets lost in your car. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just me. I lose money a lot. Does the, the government, like, account for that? Or are we just, like, out a ton of money because, like, collectively Americans have thrown out, like, $200 million and they're just like, well, we know that money exists. It's just not there. And we just lost it. What happens to that? I feel like they have to know that they've just lost it because they know how much they, like, put into circulation well right but like how do you determine how much gets lost to like make up for it do they make up for it what what do they do i have been thinking about this for weeks i mean they know that it's a huge problem that people throw away pennies like that's a big thing because people are like they're just like taking up space and they're worth practically nothing do yeah. they know how many pennies people have thrown out? Because, like, if Americans have collectively thrown out a million dollars in pennies, that's money that they can, like, money. recirculate and put back in. I feel like they have to be able to, whether or not they actually do, they have to be able to come up with some figure of, like, okay, this is reasonably, like, you know, pocket change that's, like, in someone's couch. Because they know how much they've put in circulation. I mean, they still have to keep putting more in because of inflation. So, because we always had the same amount of money in circulation, but if inflation kept going up, right? It wouldn't but really like, work. the government doesn't know how much. Like, because I've got a change cup in my car, they don't know what's in my change cup versus the nickels that haven't made it there yeah. and are now just non-existent. Yeah, but they I are mean, kind of existent. It's probably based on the amount of money that's actually circulating. Like they have basic estimates of how much money people are spending in different industries and how much money is in different banks. 
And so they can probably gauge it just based on the amount of money that's moving around because they're able to monitor that, right? And so if, um, you know, roughly 80% of the money that actually has been produced and they think is out there is actually known to be in banks or being spent, then they're like, okay, 20% of it is lost somewhere maybe. Hmm. Because they, I'm sure they get, you know, the most of the banks are federally insured, so they would know how much money is in those banks. Yeah, even if it's not exact, I feel like they have to be able to, like, put a vague figure on it. Yeah. I just, I have been trying to Google it, and all of my Googling has just led to what the government does with unclaimed money when they find it. That's and that not what I want. Me. Right, yeah, that helps me none at all. And I have been just so confused about it yeah no this is gonna keep me up at night now too Mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. like genuinely thank you zach also looks confused yeah he's buffering can you guys hear me at all yeah we can hear you (laughs) okay well this is my face now yep would you like to try turning your camera off and back on I um no it's it's my computer it's really frozen I'm just closing out anything and everything that I know I don't need and hoping that by throwing this stuff overboard um it kind of keeps us afloat why do I hear the Spongebob theme I thought I was imagining that that I don't know (laughs) but I hear it too okay cool what on earth? <laughs> it's definitely not coming from me because I'm not a person that watched Spongebob. I have, there's no me device neither. on in my room. I have nothing pulled up that could be I mean, vaguely related to Spongebob. I mean, okay, that is a, but that doesn't play music though. No, uh, he's supposed to now, but his batteries died years ago. This oh. is from like 2002. Love him. He's a 20 year old Gary. Nice. The only reason he's not in the box was because when you were here, Bridget. And we oh yeah, we dug him out. <laughs> tore through Come like on. four boxes to find him. He doesn't be on anymore. Uh, Guess how much we'd been drinking at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Me standing on this tiny chair in my bedroom closet. Like, yeah, I'm like 99 percent sure I was also uh, like literally on your floor. <laughs> yeah, <that> tracks. Excuse <laughs> right. I do that often. I don't know what it, I'm a floor person. It's true. You've laid on nearly every floor of my home. Except the basement. Well, no. Mm. No, you were on the steps in the basement. I don't think you were on the floor. Well. We'll have to set it. We'll have to, like, put that as part of our goals for the next time. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Um, we like to move on to the next question. Yeah. Which is, um, who are some historical figures that you have beef with? Thomas Edison. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck Edison. Absolutely. I would um, curb stomp that man at any given opportunity. Yes. <laughs> He's the reason we don't have free Wi-Fi. Just talking about him in a class yesterday, and I had to, like, hold in my personal feelings toward him. I'm like, look at him. He invented the kinetoscope. Thanks, Edison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, not a cool, not a cool dude. He can rot. Um, I would love to spit on the face of Ronald Reagan. Beautiful, yes. And, um, as much as I adore a lot of his films, I would, uh, backhand Stanley Kubrick for what he did to Shelley Duvall. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, a lot of directors, honestly, like, um, what's his face, Quentin Tarantino? I never, like, I enjoy some of his movies. I never want to hear a word that man uh, has to say ever again. Frankly. Just a nice punch to the face. Yep. Um, A nice broad category, any man who has ever taken credit for a woman's work in history. Very important, yes. Major beef yeah. there. Right. 
I'm looking at my bookshelf to try and get some inspiration, because, like, there's lots of books that are great, but written by people that suck. Fair. Yeah. yeah, I gotta say, though, my two big ones would probably be Edison and Kubrick. Yeah. And I feel like those are, those are like the best answers because technically they are historical at this point. Like, I mean, I'm mad at Quentin Tarantino, but he's still alive. Yeah, I feel like there are occasions where I've had that thought. Like, I've thought about a historical figure and thought, "Man, I hate that person." But when I try to think of them, just nothing comes to mind. Ain't that just the way? George Bush is still alive, but like, I still would. Oh, I'd drop kick him. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, every time I try to think of a historical figure I don't like, it always comes back to either how they treated or talked about women. Um, yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty good barometer. All of it. Or um, anybody who was a, a dick in whatever respect to people of different races as well, different religions, different you know just disrespect of diversity which like history. is a good answer but i'm also trying to think of like people that i like have like personal like the edison yeah. thing like i have personal beef with thomas edison not just like this person right. was objectively a bad person because like that's a great yeah. answer but i like am right. so personally mad at thomas edison hey zach is actually back hi bud i'm gonna just while we're doing this continue to do Ever since starting this new gig, I have a million things open on my computer, so I'm just going to continue to try to close this out. Of course, then, we do. Um, no worries. Hopefully, I'll get back on the computer. I'm sure the quality of both my video and sound is better on there. You're fine here. So, no worries. I have drunk my tea to a low enough level that you can see that it says make tea, not war. Beautiful. So, nice. Oh, you know who I have beef with? John Lennon. I have so and like I love the Beatles more than I love myself. I have so much beef with John Lennon. What yeah. a raging hypocrite! What an asshole! Mild beef with Aleister Crowley. Yeah, that's valid, but also like, who like who 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 knew Aleister Crowley and like didn't have beef with him in some way, shape, or form? I seem to be a very infuriating person. Fair. Um, this may have been discussed already because I am obviously in and out, but um, does this person have to be dead or just past their prime in whatever past they I mean, I've technically answered some people that are still alive that I consider past their prime. Yeah. Tarantino. Okay. But um, okay. If, they're, okay. if they're dead, um, we're going to say more points. Okay. Um, I would say Anatoly Karpov was, um, chess player. And he's the guy who, who Kasparov beat for the world championship, who obviously is a political commentator now, but, mm -hmm. um, Anatoly Karpov was so like, well, just the, the Russians were so desperate in general to keep, um, the World Chess Championship out of the hands of Kasparov, who was half Armenian and half Jewish, um, that they cheated a lot, and they rigged games, and they um, went so far... I know I told Bridget this, but they went so far as to draft Kasparov's top aide into the army, like, to fuck with his head. Mm. And, um... Still have beef with that. I mean, it's funny because Kasparov beat him anyways, but like. Oh, you know who I have beef with? That. Every single reporter that went out of their way to make, to like, harass Tonya Harding. I was just about to say that. That woman is owed an apology by the world. Yes. She literally, like. <laughs> the movie I, Tonya, is great, by the way. I love that My movie. My girl. Did nothing wrong. My girl did absolutely nothing wrong. The media went out of their way to eviscerate a 22-year-old girl. Yep. Because they wanted a story. Leave her alone. Um, I have very personal beef 
with Walt Disney. Hit me with it. Just because, like, he almost ruined the magic of Disney with Disney World, in my opinion, just because, like, he knew that it was going to become a capitalist hellscape, and it did immediately. <laughs> and I hate that. Yeah, and I gotta say, as much as, um, you know, Walt Disney is a flawed human being, and as much as Disney is a god-awful megacorporation, I truly do think that the actual Walt Disney would be, like, disgusted by, like, the current Disney. See, I think he knew. I think he knew, like, that it was gonna happen. And, like, is it worse than he would imagine? Probably. But I feel like he knew. Yeah, okay, I can see that argument. And, like, don't get me wrong, I love Disney. But the last time I went to Disney World, it almost just kind of made me sad. <laughs> last time I went to any Disney park, I was, a, like, I was, like, ten, so. Yeah. The no, it just made there. me sad. <laughs> I was just talking to some people about this earlier, that, um, like, with everything going on right now down in Florida with, like, the Don't Say Gay bill and all of that, like, Oh, yeah, that's Disney. disgusting. Yeah, Disney kind of coming out and, like, saying they support it, but not really supporting it at the same time. Yeah, gross. While every year during Pride Month, they make a ton of money off of, like, Pride-themed Disney items. Like, you know, yep. Rainbow, Mickey Mouse, whatever. And so they definitely have this, like, falseness about them that's yeah. just, we are going to make money um, by sort of, like, waffling on certain issues. The people that are pro-Pride are going to buy our stuff but we're not going to be very explicitly like anti certain bills because we don't want to alienate other people. Yep. Oh. Also, I got to say, um, I was talking about. Universal, the superior uh, theme park. Absolutely. Way more fun. The rides are so much better. Like Disney's cute and all. And I mean, like if like a bunch of my friends were like planning, a, like, you know, a, like a couple days in Disney, like would I go? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd probably have a great time. I enjoy rides, but like Universal is so much better. So, there's another hot take for you. I think this has taken a nice turn into the, like, into the person. Like, this is what I was talking about. Like, yeah. who do you have personal beef with? Yeah, every uh, every uh, journalist who went out of their way to, like, portray uh, Britney Spears as, like, cr as, like, you know, crazy and unhinged during, like, 2008, Ooh. the woman mm -hmm. needed help the song lucky was a cry for help and we as a society ignored her britney spears deserves the world yeah i'm obsessed with britney as you should be as is your god-given right i love when i um bring my portable speaker to the um mechanic shop at work and make all of the dads and grandpas that are my co-workers, listen to Britney Spears. Good. As you should. I love my job. Um, but yeah, that's a, like a whole category of like personal beef with like, I guess like, the whole like journalist thing that's more of like an entity, but like, yeah, any, any kind of media going out of their way to like, to like hound after like, young women in like super oh. gross ways you hate to see it really i'm personally angry at every murderer who has killed a woman when she was out running because it makes me feel like i can't go out running on my own yeah that's a that's a solid yeah. answer i would say <laughs> something else i was just talking about earlier today because i was like semi nice on saturday and i tried to go to a park to run but there weren't that many people around that i was like mm. Mm. I'm not gonna do it. I nope. listen to too many true crime podcasts about women who got murdered while out running at the park. Yeah. Um, so thanks, uh, murderers, for ruining my fun time on Saturday. I have a little bit of, um, as much as, like, I love all the, the funky story, like, I love the whole story of, like, uh, Rasputin, but I have a little bit of personal beef with him, uh, mostly because of that, um, in the last podcast series on Rasputin, Marcus makes a very convincing argument that had this Siberian goat farmer not showed up, uh, 
the Russian Empire could have potentially made the transition to a constitutional monarchy in the same way that uh, the United Kingdom did. And things might not be so messy in the world at the moment had that been the case. So I have a little bit of personal beef with um, Mr. Grigory Rasputin. But also, you know, unkillable sex wizard. I think you mean Greg Drunk. Yeah, Greg Drunk. <laughs> Go check out last podcast on the left. Let's <laughs> uh, over again. So yeah, um, I'm gonna say those are those are some of my some of my answers, but particularly the the like the Tanya Harding thing. She did nothing wrong. Leave her alone. It was fun. We're on the same time zone, but it's light out my window and it's dark behind Zach. It's been very rainy here today. Haven't got much sun all day. We haven't had sun but... either. <laughs> what do you know? I noticed. I was like, wait a minute, yeah. why is it dark? Weird. How about that? <clears throat> well, would we like to move on to the main event, friends? I'm really excited about this. Let's I have, in. like, here, hold on. Let me stream it to you guys. No, hold on. I have to, like, actually pull it up first. Not to be clear, we're trying to find overlap, right? We are trying to find overlap, but also, like, putting in uh, things that, like, we're going to be filling in our own circles, too. Like, our individual circles are not going to be blank. Okay. I was going to say, because I didn't know if there wasn't any point in bringing up something that we knew nobody else did. Or yeah, no, I mean, in. like, we're not going to, like, spend a lot of time filling those out, but we're going to put stuff there. Oh, God. I have similarities for all of you guys, but I still can't think of one that all of us we will have get yet. But we will we do, will, our, we will we get do our best to figure it out. <laughs> We had the, the three-way commonality last week. Yeah, I don't even remember what some of these were. We don't have wisdom teeth. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! You guys didn't? No, no, no we, we did. We got them removed. Oh, got them removed? Okay. I thought you just didn't grow them in at all, and I was about to be like, you lucky, lucky. Yeah, that'd be fun. Though. Wait, <laughs> Emily, did you get yours out? Yeah, I got mine well, there out. there you I, go. I only have three yeah, taken out. I don't know if that means anything different, but... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, here, hold on. Let me... I'm gonna Do be I switching back and forth between the, like... Because I'm the one who's screen recording. Anyway. Yeah, uh... this is beautiful. Thank you. Hold on, I need a text Whoa, box here. Yeah. I mean, we could put wisdom teeth away in the middle there. Look at that. Wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth, or lack thereof. Um, when I got my wisdom teeth removed, I, like, went fully under. Oh, so did I. It was, I was great. Finally, I had a lot of fun. When I was finally, like, with it, the nurse came over and she gave me a piece of chocolate. And I was just like, oh, thank you. And apparently while I was in my, um loopy state the nurses like one nurse had chocolate and she was giving it out to people and i heard her outside and i screamed <gasps> from inside my room that i wanted chocolate that's great i love that thank you for sharing Which, terribly on brand for me but um how about you, like remus lupin too like give the chocolate eat this you'll feel better yeah harry potter yeah I remember thinking it was going to be such a more, like, nuanced and sophisticated process. Because I wasn't out, but I was, like, in and out. Like, they gave me that, so I was just kind of drifting in and out of consciousness. And I remember just, like, his, like, one hand on my chest, the other hand, like, in my mouth. And, like, just, like, using brute force. And I was like, oh, well, like, I could have done that. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, Yeah. <laughs> He's like bracing himself. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, does any would anyone like to volunteer anything for their individual? Oh, 
probably throw knitting in mine. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Pretty sure nobody else knits, really. You did technically teach me, but I'm just very bad at it, and I don't do it often. I so we're gonna, like that, we're gonna give that one to you. Let's see, we it does occupy significant amounts of my time. And your money. Oh my god, that's cute. <laughs> Thousands of dollars of fancy yarn. Why am I blanking on literally everything I've ever enjoyed? This is so dumb. Right. Oh, I wait, have actually, no Brooks, I have one for the two of us. Doctor Who, oh, baby. Yeah. Oh man, for the two of us, I was gonna throw out what we do in the shadows and uh Oh last hell pod. yeah. Last pod needs to be in there too. Little poddle. Little poddle. Okay, cool. So we're we're making progress. We love to see it. Um Emily, I have one for the two of us. Can you guess? As a joke. It's Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> I'm just writing Doki Doki. Ugh. Hmm. Definitely got a, th a few that we could throw in for me and Zach. We have more than a few. <laughs> oh yeah, you have your... I mean, immediately come to my running West Wing site. Yep. And Crooked Media. Oh yeah, duh. Yeah. No, and, and you know what's funny is is I, I had running and, and Psych and West Wing, and then when Bridget mentioned last podcast on the left, I was like, oh yeah, we have podcasts, too. So, and, and a borderline unnatural obsession with Love It and... Uh, yeah, oh my god, I would die for him. Rodan. Yeah. <laughs> like, with a relationship. Keep Which is funny. You, you guys can keep I throwing can stuff at me, by the way, for like Wait, various other ones. What's in my circle with Emily? I can't actually read it. Oh, that's for me and Bridget. Oh, the wrong okay. area. oh, oh yeah, whoopsies, not. that is the wrong one. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, you can say like just crooked media slash love it. Oh no, I just need to make that bigger. Emily, I have another one for the two of us. I'm like scared. It's fan fiction. No. <laughs> You're right, but you didn't have to say it. <laughs> You're right, but you shouldn't say it. Um Yeah, what else we got? What else we got, besties? Mm -hmm. Bridget and I, and presumably Emily as well, have, like, vine culture. Vine. Yes. Ugh, Liz love vine. I miss yeah. vine. I really do. Yeah, I like yeah, we're gonna call it that. We're gonna call it vine culture. Vine it, culture. You know, it really is its own culture. It is. It's a language. Okay, so the only um, tricky thing about having a forest circle then is that some of those circles don't overlap just by themselves. Like, there is no overlap between just me and Emily, for example, or just Bridget and Zach. Those can have just their own little area on the outside, maybe, that we just Oh, pretend. yeah. Okay. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. Um, I know that Bridget and I possess the, abil the ability to communicate entirely in John Mulaney quotes. Yes. Like, literally, if somebody said you can only speak in things John Mulaney has previously said. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I like it literally it, wouldn't be a problem. It's not not my brain. <laughs> he doesn't live there rent-free. Hmm, I'm trying to think of a good way to... Of, like, a good way to represent, like, some of the categories that don't quite fit on the like that don't actually fit on the like Venn diagram I should have thought about this before but that's my own fault I mean I didn't think about it until Brooks pointed it out or oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it until I started trying to like look, consider the overlap yeah. between the combination I'm like, oh wait I'll like color code it or something later okay um. Huh. Um, I think Emily and I both think that um, Andy Goodell is a fucking daddy. 
<laughs> what what do you want me not. to write for that? <laughs> no. Um, you can write fuck Andy Goodell. Yeah, you, you can write fuck Andy Goodell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do I spell this last per this person's last name? G O O D E L L. Works for me. I forget the name of the state senator from that from that county, but he loves reminding people he used to be the county executive oh, in boy. everything he does. He, every statement, literally, he could. So somebody could be like, "Do you drink water?" And he would be like, "Well, as a former county executive, we had water in my office." And like, oh my god. <laughs> Wild. Showing up on the front page of the <laughs> local newspaper. And every time I see him, I'm like, I would love to punch that face. Ooh, ooh. What's his name again? I'm blanking on. I've been like. <laughs> the senator. Uh, Tom Reed. Is that what? That's a guy in politics around here there that I know. I don't know what no, he does. He's in Congress. I think. I don't know, because I know that Andy Goodell was also county executive. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. Anyways. Brooks and Emily, you two have cats. Cats. Fuck Schumer. Oh, and then Bridget and I have dogs. Chuck Schumer. Is that who you're thinking of? No, but Chuck Schumer is something else entirely. He's like... <laughs> We follow the pet theme. We also got snakes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's snakes. My uh, my friend from grad school was posting pictures of her beardy on, on social media again. Aww. Back to uh, morph market fantasy shopping. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Makes me so sad. I just love one. Aww. I want a beard. George Borello. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is going to bother me if I don't know who it is. Yeah, he's he's so funny. Oh, I have one for him. He's just myself. so goofy looking. They're all goofy looking. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get into politics for their looks. No, there's a reason that they call Washington, D.C., Los Angeles for ugly people. <gasps> Literally. Yeah. Why is this the first time I'm hearing this? Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely a thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> that makes me think of a quote from one of my favorite movies called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, um, where Robert Downey Jr.'s character is talking about how all of the girls in L.A. are just, like, crazy. He's like, it's like somebody took the, the U.S. by the East Coast and shook it, and all the normal girls managed to hang on. <laughs> Wait, that's so funny. <laughs> well, you could do that, but for look, you know, like... Yeah. By the and shook it and all the non good looking people managed to hang on. <laughs> Emily, we need some stuff for just you. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't have any anything about me. Cool. I don't exist. Okay. Um I am the only science person here. Science rules. <laughs> I'm gonna write can do math. I also can do math. I am pretty good at math. I have published papers with lots of statistics in them. Shut up. Statistics is not real math. It's it's um it's an art form. Sure. You can make, you can make statistics do whatever you want. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> I do I do do math. God, I wish Sometimes actually I no, do I don't feel... wish that were me. Sometimes I do feel bad for the Republicans in the assembly. Like, how much would that suck every day that your job is to go to work and lose? That's literally I mean, your whole job. You you go to work knowing you don't have a prayer of, like... Well, right, but then they just know going into it, so then they, I feel like they don't care as much. Yeah. Oh. SpongeBob. For the young people. But also not... But Zach, not really, I don't think. What? Are you, you are not well versed in SpongeBob SquarePants, correct? No, I'm part of the more senior half of this podcast. God, you're lame. <laughs> <laughs> I 
How's it feel being old? <laughs> you what, 26? 25. 25, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I still have a... How are you 25 years old for SpongeBob? Wait, what? That's what I'm saying. My 32-year-old sister and I talk in SpongeBob clothes on the daily. Oh, my parents just didn't really let us watch TV, so... That's fair, I guess. I was going to say, you're way closer to their age than mine. Yeah, no, I know. It's <laughs> so, a lifestyle. I just, the, the, forget who, I think it was Favreau who turned 40, and then somebody pointed out that Love It was the only 30-something left on Pod Save America, and he's, like, speaking for the younger demographic, and ever since then, that's just, like, lived in my head. Speaking for the youths. <laughs> They're like, you're 39. Like, shut up. I'm the representative old on the podcast. <laughs> I'm putting that in your circle. Putting what in your circle? Old. Old? <laughs> and yet very youthful, because someone the other day thought I was 20, 25, 26. Who? So, nailed it. Um, Somebody from a running group. I love that for you. I was hoping it would be one of your students because that would make it way funnier. No, I thought it was funny when she, like, it was like your niece or something, was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, and she, yeah that was uh, that summer. And I think that's so funny because kids will not hesitate to tell you when you look crusty. Yeah. Like, if a small you child know. thinks you're one of them, that's how you know. The number of times people thought I was joking when I told them I was a professor. Like, they're like, oh, that's funny. And I'm like, no, no, I, I started teaching no, comedy no, like, like a And they're like, N-n-n-n. like, did you though? <laughs> like, no, really. That's why I carry the pocket version of my PhD. Honestly, okay, if I had a PhD, I totally would do that as well. Be like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that I would just stable it to my forehead. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's no, part of the reason why this is like, it's completely different. But like, I want to get forklift certified because you get a little card for your wallet. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. I love it. I still have mine. And I just think that'd be fun. I want to carry it around. Mm -hmm. Solid reason. I want to give somebody, like, I want to drive for Uber, but then go pick somebody up on a pallet jack. Yes! Zach, we have nothing for you. (laughs) What? We have nothing for you. Nothing, like, singular. Oh. Um, I wait for a policy. Yeah, say, you know, something politically oriented. Foreign policy, government, chess. Oh um, yeah. Um. Oh wait, Bridget and I also have the Beatles. Oh my God, yes. I have the Beatles. <gasps> and, I thought and, I and, love the Beatles. Perfect. Oh my God, we can actually use that little circle thingy. Beautiful. <laughs> because Emily is our common is our common link. Yes. <laughs> there we go. This is going to get a little messy. How did we almost okay. forget about the Beatles? I know. What's wrong I with thought, us? That was one of the first things I thought about, that somebody was talking, and I was like, I'll say it when they're done, and then I forgot. I had thought of that for me and Bridget, but then somebody was talking about something else, and then I forgot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have the attention span, so like... Do you ever, like, wake up early just to think about how much you love Upper Soul? Because I've definitely done that. Um, I, uh, would wake up early to think about how much I love, um, Abbey Road. Actually, no. How much I love Magical Mystery Tour. That is such an underrated album. I I agree. Everyone's always like, oh, Magical Mystery Tour is their worst album. But you know what's on Magical Mystery Tour? All You Need Is Love. Strawberry Fields. Uh, freaking Penny Lane. Penny Lane is, like, what one ones that people know. Penny Lane bangs. Even people who don't know. Penny Lane yeah, Penny Lane fucks. Your mother should know that Your one. Your mother should know. Great song. Fool on the Hill. Mm-hmm. Great song. Mm-hmm. I even like Blue Jay Way. Blue Jay Way. They're all good songs. Blue Jay Way smacks. Have you yeah. ever actually watched the movie Magical Mystery Tour? It's god awful, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, are we all like New England stands? I know Brooks and Bridget yeah, I, and I, I, I so, are. Kinda. We all have what some connection to it. I mean, you know. Yeah. I just think it's nice there. <laughs> and that, and that, and all that. Oh, man, I was just thinking the other day, Zach, about, like, when you were in Providence, that I should have mentioned, there's a coffee shop there that I can't remember the name of, but I could find it. There's so many coffee shops in Providence. I had a strawberries and cream scone there once that, like, I still think about on a regular basis. Ooh. 
I I love I, I think Providence might win the award for like city with most creative coffee shop names because they crack me up. Mm-hmm. Brood awakenings. I love it. <laughs> I was so happy like because I snapped you that that like picture of the Capitol like from my car I was at a red light like it just turned green and you're like I know where that is (laughs) I got like like like, like, no other context yeah oh I'm assuming we've all seen Stranger Things that could go in the middle I haven't god damn it Zach okay well that can be (laughs) for the three the three ladies here yeah I was about to say that can be yeah (laughs) Yay, that. Now we have something in there that isn't just Geneseo. Yeah, this is gonna get a little hard to read, but it's fine. Yeah. Oh well. We're just gonna deal with it. I suppose I could have made the text a uh, color that isn't white, but. I mean, you probably also can overlap them a little bit more, too, eventually, because, like, our single things aren't going to take up too much space. Because I feel like yeah. we're trying to connect more. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Am I the only wine person? Is anybody else? I, I mean, like, like it, but not to the point that, like... Yeah, it's not my beverage of choice. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you guys oh. are missing out. Put that's that what, over for me. That's what I was thinking about, like, um, like beer and stuff, too. I drink everything. Although, like, Bridget, you and I have definitely put down more than one box of wine. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, the, if it's around, yeah. <laughs> it's not my beer. Oh, well, yeah, no. Like, I go to the bar and order wine. I'm See, one of those people. <laughs> that I don't do. Oh. No, I'm a craft beer snob. That's what I always get. And that is going in your circle. <laughs> For Brooks and I, can you put no protein? I mean, I'm going to say she's not technically no protein, but I'm going to put limited protein. I know, but it sounds like she also gets a fair amount of ribbing for, like... Yeah, that's why I was trying to think, like... Um... Like, what I was sort of thinking earlier was, like, I, I love um, vegan food items, generally. Because we've definitely talked about, like, because um, I was, I remember one point I was talking about, like, my fridge was nothing but, like, safe tofu and stuff like that. Yeah. And then everyone's just, where do you get your protein? Yeah. <laughs> Same place you get it. <laughs> we... We need something for the cer- for the overlap of Emily, Zach, and Brooks, and then that's gonna be tricky. I know. Yeah, we gotta find something though. There has to be at least one. But that's thing. gonna be really tricky. Okay, what is there for myself, Zach, and Brooks? Where would we put true crime on there? Ooh, that might be in the center. That's a good one. It's not my thing though. And then oh. that is it goes in the Geneseo <laughs> and Stranger Things yeah. circle. Okay. I thought that was something that might be relatively universal. I I keep, I don't know, I keep meaning to get it into those podcasts. I just never do. But that tweet about how, like, want to start a true crime podcast, but I don't have the time to research it, so I'm just committing to crimes myself, that cracks me up every time. <laughs> That's just a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is literally an episode of, like, Criminal Minds, where they're tracking all of these, like, like I was about to say that, that's an episode of like, Archives. And they're like, wait a second wait a second, this person is reporting on these crimes way too quickly, and then, like... Yeah. What's that? I feel like that's a I, common trope, actually, in a lot of... Yeah. Crime I think Criminal Minds is as close as I've gotten to a true crime podcast, even though I know they're not, like, mm-hmm. real crimes. Um, we've mentioned Buffy the Vampire Slayer multiple times on this podcast. Is that just me and Brooks? I have not watched Buffy. Mm-hmm. I mean, Joss Whedon in general, not him as a human being, obviously. But, but like, his work. His work. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just sent the thing earlier that was a reference to Cabin in the Woods. In the, the chat. Wait, I want to see. I love Cabin in oh, the Woods. The Cabin in the Woods. Is that... Can we put that? 
Sure. Love Cabin in the Woods. I, I love I, Cabin I, I in the Woods. I do too. There we go, we have something. <laughs> what was it, like a Japanese rock monster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Buffy, Angel, all of it. Although I never saw a dollhouse. I haven't seen that either, though. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It, it felt a little too, like, overly sexualized. Hmm. A little sexist. Bridget, you're in the wrong thing again. Oh. Cabin in the Woods goes down. Boop, thank you. Yeah. Keeping me on track. Um, Have you guys seen the movie Rubber? Is that the one about, like, the murderous tire? Yeah. <laughs> I what? haven't seen that, but I want to because I love bad movies. I, I haven't either, but that's another one that I want to watch purely because I know it's going to be terrible. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, if you want to watch an absolutely terrible movie, Thanks Killing. Okay. That sounds cool. It's so bad, it's fantastic. <laughs> I love movies like that. I really do. Monty Python. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. One of my absolute favorite things on the planet. That gets quoted in this household on a daily basis. It's so bad. Just thinking about it because, like, oh, it's on my mug. There we go. There we Every go. time Trump would do something stupid while he was in office, that was the first thing that came to mind. She's like, well, I didn't vote for you. I didn't vote for you. <laughs> yeah. Don't vote for a king. <laughs> I thought we were totally they like distracted. totally break down like constitutional republics. I again love Monty Python so much. <laughs> Sorry, that's like my favorite part of the movie, and now I'm gonna keep laughing because it's that phrase. You know which phrase I'm yeah. using? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't even say it. Wait, which one? Moistened bent. <laughs> Oh man, I love Monty Python Just so much. Because some watery tart loved a scimitar at me. There's <laughs> no basis for a system of government. Supreme power should derive from the man they the masses. <laughs> Not some think... personal aquatic ceremony. <laughs> Are you guys okay? No. <laughs> Come and... and My and favorite movie of all time. And that's the violence inherent in the system and being oppressed. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Oh no, I God. think my favorite I absolutely scene love that, movie. that apparently one time, like, some fan of Monty Python, like, sent a letter to, <sighs> fucking what's his face, John Cleese, saying that, like, saying something about, some something negative about Graham Chapman being gay, <laughs> so John Cleese wrote back that they had killed him. <laughs> he just sent a letter back to the fan being like, we took care of it. <laughs> John, okay, so... Th there was actually I, I may have mentioned this once before but like there was actually like a scientific study done that determined that john cleese's hilly walk was 170 percent more silly than the regular walk beautiful than an average like they literally measured how far up his leg goes compared to the normal person <laughs> <laughs> i also love yeah. like all, all of like george harrison's connections to monty python it's delightful i think the trial where they're trying that person for being a witch is probably my favorite scene in the, the whole movie. My favorite scene in Holy Grail is um, the one where he, where uh, Sir Lancelot is trying to rescue a per the, based on the note in the tower, and it was sent by like the king, like that guy's son, and he thinks it was a lady. And the two things there that take me out every single time are one day all of this will be yours. Well, the curtains! Oh, <laughs> and who are you? I'm your son. <laughs> you mentioned that point all the time. I knew you were going to mention it. Because it's hysterical. I just felt myself from buying a t-shirt last week, and I still keep thinking about it from uh, one of the Flying Circus sketches, one of my favorite. It just has a picture of a dead parrot on it. and says, I wish to lodge a complaint. The dead parrot sketch. I don't know if anyone's seen that. That's great. I love that. They, um, they were originally supposed to have actual horses in that first scene, and they just like literally couldn't afford it. Oh, yeah. So they... Yeah, and then they ran out of money, so they just ended the movie. Yeah. Which, yeah. Like, power move. I love money Python so much. It's great. Okay, we're kind of getting off track, even though that is a, that's the whole point of this podcast, but technically, we do have something we're supposed to be doing. I literally just talked about money Python for like three straight hours. We can do that sometime. Um, 
I see we're concentrating it. Like, we gotta find, like, Emily, Zach, we gotta find more for you two. George Borello? What does that no. mean? I do not want George Borello on this <laughs> at all. Andy Goodell's on there, and that's bad enough. <laughs> That was literally the only thing I could think of. That's was so like funny. Andy Goodell. <laughs> I despise him. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Zach, the other day when you told me that my DMs need to come with a warning was one of the highest compliments I have ever received. Oh my god, literally <laughs> I can't I can't open your DMs in public anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. sent her a DM. Like, I'll, I'll be at just, work just... and I open Bridget's thing. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll say it out loud. Whatever. There was a tweet that was like, "Tight pussies kind of annoying," and one of the replies was, "Uncoonch me, foul harlot." <laughs> 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 the the very reason the phrase thanks I hate it. <laughs> um but yeah, and then uh after I sent that to the group chat, Zach told me that my DMs need to come with a warning and it's one of the highest compliments I've ever received in my life. So funny. <laughs> but yeah, um Emily and I I think we're on a very similar level of unhinged, frankly, which is why um I think I need to we need to add you to more of the group chats. <laughs> Because I think that'll but, just, that'll elevate the energy. That, that tiny crab you sent was like one of my favorite things of all time. You should have oh, seen yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I was, I was losing my mind. I, I was like, hey, it's Brooks. <laughs> None of us can do that. Yeah. Literally just like. <laughs> I watched it like four times. <laughs> Giggling like a small child. And his little windshield wipers. <laughs> yeah, windshield yeah. wipers, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. What else we got? We're. I want to make it a little ba a little balanced, you know. What, what do we need? We Grab need more my, stuff uh, for Emily and Zach, Kendrick. and then might put in just like one or two more things for the rest of y'all individually. Yeah, we don't have much the like the crosses either, though. Yeah, yeah, we can chuck those off to the side and then color and then like color code them because i'm gonna up, like upload like a final nice version of this although honestly there's something pretty profound that the only thing we have in common is that we both hate andy goodell you know what it's, it feels like adding more would kind of ruin the purity of the sentiment okay then we just need more for the two for <laughs> everyone else i i just can't think of anything honestly Hmm. But I think that's because out of, like, the possible combination of, like, me to Bridget, me to Brooks, and, like, if you were to, like, do that for everybody, like, Emily and I know each other the least best. This is also true. So then I want more than one thing in the center, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't tried very hard on that. And I think this one's gonna be difficult. Yeah. And it has to be something, like... Yeah, it's gotta be something good. It can't like, be that, like, we all like we go, books or whatever, you Right, know? like, that we go out of our way to do. We gotta think of something yeah. really good. Does everyone watch Shit's Creek? No. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm gonna put that back, I'm gonna put that in. Oh, no. No, I, I know don't. you don't, but I'm putting oh, okay. it in for the, three, for, for the three ladies. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. The three people with taste. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I have no personality traits. I've just learned this about myself right now. Hmm. Oh, I have another one for myself. Not that that helps, but like, whatever. I'm putting it down. Oh, I have one. Actually, that's kind of one for me and Emily. Emily, we both play video games. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Do you still play Animal Crossing? I already put that down. Huh? I already put down Animal Crossing. Oh, good. Good. Good stuff. Although I haven't, I haven't checked on my island in forever, and at this point I'm, like, kind of afraid to. Stop. You make me sad. I pretend I do not see it. That's Monty Python! <laughs> there, you make me sad. It is. Sorry. You make me sad. <laughs> um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to think, I promise. It's... Hmm. There has to be something. Yeah. There's gotta be, especially, like, movies and TV shows that have broad appeal. Yeah. Um. Easiest. Mike, sure? Can you go through my my Netflix? Office, Parks and Rock, Good Place, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, those films. I do love love The Good Place. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Love The Good Place. Love The Office. The Good Place. Is that it? There we go. We did it. I want to. See, I mean, I would like to see how far we can push our luck, but if that's it, I will take oh, it. Oh, wait. I'd watch all wait, this. If we all had, if we had to be one of the four main characters from The Good Place, like Jason, Chidi, Eleanor, I forget who the other one is. Tani. I mean, here's yes. the thing. In I mean, real life, you. I don't know. sister. <laughs> um, here's the thing. In real life, I definitely am Chidi. I kind of wish oh. I was uh, Jason. He seems like he's vibing. Yeah. I'm like, I would like love Chidi. to be him. I love Jason so much. He's just like, oh, dip, homies. I am Eleanor. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Jacksonville was rated one of the top 10 swamp states in Northwest Florida. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I wish I was that stupid. I really do. I hate being sentient. <laughs> okay, well, we have two things. Which, frankly, That's I'm impressed. Solid, that, I'm honestly, impressed that we got there at all. Again, I would like yeah. to see yeah. if we can maybe find one more, but I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, Parks and Rec? I, do, I have not watched Parks and Rec. I mean, okay. I've seen a couple episodes, but like. I don't trust I, with Parks and Rec. Wait, 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 are Zach and I the two Brooklyn Nine Nine people, or Brooks? Is that you too? Mm-hmm. I'll put that there. I mean, that can go in our little area. Yeah, perfect. Parks and Rec, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Parks and Rec, yeah. What a combo, Brooklyn Nine Nine and Cabin in the Woods. Right. Oh yeah. Wait, Emily, have you been to Maine? No. Damn. I mean, that would be something for us, but yeah. But again, some of these will have to will be added in post. Yeah. I love you. Oh yeah, maybe I can do that in post. I'll make some little smaller Venn diagrams. That'll be cute. That would be cute. Anyway. Hmm. There has to be one more thing. Yeah. Also, unrelated, did y'all see the new Batman? Not yet. No. No, but I did see a funny tweet about it. Well, okay, I saw lots of funny tweets about it. I have been Um, enjoying the Twitter discourse about the new Batman. Yeah. I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, (laughs) Somebody tweeted, my grandma's review of Batman, it was very loud, but, but, but Batman managed a lot of things. You know, you know, that's all you need. That's all you need. (laughs) Compliment. Things, lots of them. Yeah, I gotta say, um, Robert Pattinson is the, like, goth emo Batman of my dreams. I love Robert Pattinson. I'm not afraid to say it. I love that man so much. He is so unhinged. I I want to frame that photo, that picture of him in the tracksuit, just like in the kitchen, like like yeah. when I have my own place, I will have that framed on my wall. Anyway, um, also Paul Dano as the Riddler, my beloved. gotta be one more 
trying to think. I was like, there's got to be somebody who's like universally beloved that we would all like. And then sometimes I remember the age difference and I pause. Yeah. Because I was like Mr. Rogers. But I feel like. Good dude. Yeah. He's probably yeah, like a good dude, dude, but like I didn't. It's not like I grew up watching it. Yeah. And that's why I stopped myself because yeah. I, I grew up 45 minutes from Pittsburgh, which is where, you know, his, his show was filmed. Right. And it was a huge How do you feel about Popper Downey Jr.? He does seem like a cool dude. Because I, I like adore him. him, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know if um, I go that far. Mm. Oh, how do we feel blood. about just like Sherlock Holmes and, he, and all Sherlock Holmes stories? I mean, I, um, <laughs> Emily, you and I are sharing a look. <laughs> talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, but, um, there was in a, a the BBC Sherlock when I was like fourteen and on Tumblr. I had some big feelings about that. I have a lot of visual aids nearby. I love that for you. I love that too. Sherlock Holmes put it in the middle. Yeah, yeah. It's a gripping casebook of stories. I love that for you. I have a book that is all of the chess positions that have ever been featured in the Sherlock Holmes stories. Like, it's literally just a book, and it's just all the excerpts of any time chess. Because, because it's a lot. It is, like, chess plays a big part in the Sherlock stories. Oh, yeah, that might be part. the single nerdiest thing I've ever heard, and I love it. <laughs> Wait, now I want to see if I can find it. Give me one second. Oh, my God. Okay, you know what? Three things. I think we did good. I'm proud of us. Anybody else super into graphic novels? I've been me. meaning to get more into graphic novels, honestly. I can't. They don't hold my attention, which sounds ridiculous because, like, it's pictures, but I can't do it. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't really read, like, the superhero-y ones, um, unless there's something, like, interesting about them, like Watchmen, you I was know, literally being, like, about to say Watchmen, though. Or, or, like, I have, um, somewhere laying around Superman Red Sun. Which is an alternate version of Superman if he had, his pod had landed in the USSR instead of. In I'm going the US. to borrow that from you. <laughs> Although part of the reason why I don't like them is because I was first introduced to them by a professor at Geneseo, and she made us read really bad ones. Ew, gross. So. Huh? The chess mysteries of Sherlock Holmes. I love it. That's so cool. That's amazing. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about my graphic novel collection with Mouse being in the news so much recently, being a yeah. banned book. Because it's funny, like, I was just using that in one of my classes last semester. Whack. It's like, yeah, that's a, that's a lovely book. It's one of my favorites. Well, two books, technically. Got that over here, too. I will be borrowing some books from you, it sounds did like. Any, did anybody read Pearls Before Swine or Foxtrot growing up? Not really. Okay. Who, who wrote those? That sounds familiar. Um, Stephen Pass, this, Pace, this, or something, wrote Pearls Before mm -hmm. Swine, and I don't remember who wrote Foxtrot, but, like, mm -hmm. if I saw the name, I would know it. I don't know. But anyways, I I actually liked those growing up. I think I think we did a decent job. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna add more stuff when I'm uh, working on this episode this week, but I think we did good. I had fun. We did so good. The fact that we managed to find more than one thing for the center, I'm really proud of us, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good place for us to leave it tonight. How do we feel? We did it! Yeah. Loi Simos. All right. What good timing. Four minutes till the seance. Oh, beautiful. All right. Well, All right. Thank you, friends, for fighting with us. As always, we appreciate each and every single one of you, and we'll be back again next week. Adios. Wheels. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly, Zach Calderon, and Dr. Sarah Brooks, featuring special guests Emily Whitney. You can find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or your other favorite listening platform. Follow us on Twitter at BridgetKelly98, at Zach Calderon, at and Sarah Said, and at EWIT789. Rate and review us on your podcatcher of choice, like, comment, and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitch, and join our Discord community using the links in the description. You can also help support us via the ACAST supporter feature, or consider donating to our Patreon. Thanks for listening!